Hello everyone, uh, I'm Matt Griggs of Griggs Farms LLC here in Humboldt, Tennessee. Uh, we'll get to the video of the end of our corn harvest here in just a minute, but first I wanted to bring you a couple of important messages. Shortly after the video that you're going to watch on our way home from the field, we were transporting equipment. I was involved in a very serious combine accident in which I was ejected from the cab of the combine moving at about 20 miles an hour. It is only by the grace of God that I'm still here and it really brought some things into, into perspective that I wanted to share with you. Uh, the first thing is is about safety. Uh, as farmers, you know, we're, we're naturally always in a hurry. We're always in a hurry to get that seed in the ground, get the crop harvested, get our hay bale, get the grain bin unplugged or whatnot. We're, we're always in a hurry. And as a result, a lot of times we have a tendency to cut corners when it comes to safety. You know, just because we've done something a thousand times a certain way doesn't mean that we're being safe. All it takes is one time. All it takes one time and your life is over with. I just wanted to stress that, you know, in, in, in my, com uh, for, for example, in my combine, I've known it's had seat belts same way as in my tractors and cotton pickers. I've never once given two thoughts about putting the seat belt on. I mean, we're driving a big piece of equipment at slow speeds. Uh, what's the need for a seat belt? I found out real quickly the other day that a uh, seat belt is there for a reason. Now, I can guarantee you I'm gonna wear mine from uh, from now on. And it's just one example of, of, many, of many things that we do. Uh, there's no, there is no task that is too important that it's worth risking your that's worth risking your life over. Make sure you pay attention to all the details. The crop will still be there, the hail still be still be there, the job will still be there. But if you're not there, it really doesn't make any difference. So, please pay attention to the details. Think about your safety first. Do whatever you can to make sure you're being as safe on the job as possible. We have an inherently dangerous job that we can't always foresee all the all the problems that might that might that might cause us harm but do your best to look to look look for those and identify them and, and take steps to make sure that nothing bad happens to you make sure that you're going to be around at the end of the day to go home to your wife your kids your loved ones because without without you uh, their lives their lives will never be the same and that's that's a dose of reality that my family got this week luckily Good Lord is watching out for me and I'm gonna be around another day. I get a chance to learn from my mistakes. I get the chance to tell you about my mistakes and hopefully you'll learn from my mistakes and, and, won't, re and won't, won't repeat them. Uh, second thing I, I really wanna talk about is, uh, I'm a Christian. I've always been a Christian. Every, you know, I grew up in church. I've always been a Christian. I know where I'm going when my time on this earth is done. I'm not a good Christian, not not by a long stretch. I'm a sinner. I, I sin daily. I try to do the Lord's will. I want to do the Lord's will, but I I am imperfect, just like every other human on on this earth. But it, I was called I was called by the Lord after this accident to, to share my to share my testimony. I found out how quickly that tomorrow is not guaranteed for us. I know there's a lot of people out there that think. Uh, yeah, I'll make that change in my life. I'll do it next week, next month, next year. I'm good right now. I'm young, healthy. Nothing's going to happen to me. I'm the same way. I'm still relatively young. I'm still relatively healthy. But I came this close to not surviving, to not having another day. If I wasn't right with the Lord, I would, I'd spend eternity in hell. And that would be a mistake that I would pay for for eternity. I want to encourage you that if you don't know the Lord, if, if you're not right with God, if you need to make a change in your life, do it now. Don't wait. You don't know what tomorrow brings. You don't know if you've got it tomorrow. So those, those are the two things that were really brought into perspective by, by my accident. And I'll, I'll share all the details of the accident after, after the corn, corn harvest video, but those were two things that couldn't wait. So. I encourage you to watch the rest of our uh, corn harvest video and, and see the details of the accident and, and how it happened. 
So please make sure you pay attention to safety first. Make sure you know where you're going when your time on earth is done. Make sure you're comfortable with that. If you don't, if you don't know God, message me. I'll be glad to walk you through. Walk into your uh, walk into your nearest church. Uh, go buy a Bible. Uh, you know, there's plenty of resources. Av- uh, there's plenty of resources available to you, but don't put it off. Don't wait until don't wait until it's too late. Another uh, video. Uh, we're right here at the end of our corn harvest. We're on our last farm to shell corn on 56 acre farm, and total we got uh, uh, we got about seven eight acres left. So first part of harvest 2020 is uh, approaching to an end, and I gotta say. Uh, so far, I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased with how things have gone. Our uh, yields on corn have been extremely variable, especially in Crockett County. If you watched our first video on the beginning of corn harvest, uh, you'll know that on uh, one uh, on the beginning of the past, it might uh, corn might be yielded 90 bushels an acre, and then by the time we get to the other end of the past, uh, might be in a better spot. You know could be yielded 200 to 250 bushels an acre so uh, the tail of corn this year has just been where we got the rain and where we missed the rain where where we got the rain yields have been outstanding but once we moved on up into Madison County uh, yields picked up quite a bit uh, because there mid mid to late July uh, in Madison County, we got about an inch of rain that we missed out on around the shop there in Crockett County. So, looks like that made all the difference in the in the world on, on corn yield. Our last farm that we're on, uh, it's technically in Madison County, but it's only a few miles from the shop. Yields are better than, yields, yields is better on this farm than it was on those around my shop, but not quite as good as others on Madison County. It's kind of right there on the borderline of, of, not, of not getting rain. So our uh, worst average farm so far, according to Yield Monitor, has been uh, 132. That was the uh, second farm that we shelled for this poor thin hill ground and probably the driest part of West Tennessee. And then our best yield so far was uh, 100 was on a 100 acre farm in Madison County, what I typically consider to be some of my best soil, and it averaged about uh, 210, 215. So we've had yields all over the board. Uh, according to my yield monitor, we're going to end up with a final average yield of somewhere around 170 bushels, which at the beginning of corn harvest, I was kind of being pessimistic because of the weather we had, I was thinking we'd average somewhere probably between 150 and 160 bushels overall, but the yield, uh, the yields in Madison County, where I knew my better corn would be, really surprised me. I knew it was going to be better, I just didn't know it was going to be as good as what it was. So, overall, we're thankful the good Lord has blessed us with, uh, with, a, good, with a good corn crop this year, even if some of it was below average. We still winding up with a at least a little bit of a profitable crop. We're not going to make much money off of it, but it's really fortunate that the Lord has blessed us something, something to harvest this year. A total this year, we got uh, we had 500 acres of corn. We're down to our last five, six, seven acres. And uh, so once we get done with corn, it'll mark us about 25% complete with fall harvest. We got about 2,000 acres to harvest this year, so we'll be about 25% done, but unfortunately the easy part of harvest is, is over with. Corn harvest is usually fairly easy. We're not under the gun, pressed for time. It's about the only thing we've got to do. So it's probably going to be about a week and a half, two weeks before we fire our combine up again. we got soybeans that are uh, uh, they're turning, but they're taking their sweet time about getting dry down. We got a 4.8 maturity soybeans, and uh, the leaves have turned yellow, but 
it's probably going to be at least a week and a half, maybe even close to two weeks before they're completely mature and ready to cut, which unfortunately is probably going to coincide with when we need to start picking cotton. So we're going to be pulled in several different directions, uh, trying to get our crops out. October, you know, uh, it's what, I think uh, September uh, 23rd, September 24th, something like that, and about to turn the calendar to October. October is always, year in, year out, October is our busiest year. I mean, we're going 90 to nothing for the whole month just because we got so much to do. We got soybeans to harvest, we got cotton to harvest, we got cover crops to to plant, we got wheat to plant, so we're, uh, we we definitely got our work work cut out for us. We got about 350 acres of full season soybeans that are going to be ready here in a week and a half to two weeks. We got 630 acres of cotton to pick, so we got uh, we got a whole lot coming up. But anyway, just to just to summarize, uh, corn harvest it's gone. Uh, it's gone. Corn harvest has gone pretty smoothly. We've only had a, a few mishaps. Uh, probably the biggest mishap that we had was uh, I hit a washout with a full bin that I did not see. And uh, my outside uh, dual tire got knocked off the rim, broke the seal, so lost all air. And as soon as I hit that wash, it bent the rim. So that, uh, that cost us about a half a day. Had to take the dual off and take it to a tire shop. And, uh, it took them about a half a day to get, get the rim straightened back out. Fortunately, they were able to get the rim straightened out because I'd hate to see how long we would have been down if I'd had to buy a new rim. Because I don't know where the closest one would be. And I sure as heck don't know how much it cost, but I guarantee you it would not be cheap. And anyway, uh, another problem we had, a pretty serious problem popped up the first day of corn harvest is the uh, rear main seal on my combine started leaking again, which if you watched the first video, you know that it started originally leaking during wheat harvest. And as soon as wheat harvest got over with, we sent it to the dealership, uh, spent about $6,000 to have the motor pulled and new seal put back in, but apparently something happened with this seal and it, it started leaking almost immediately. So been real worried about uh, the fire hazard during, during corn harvest, but we just we didn't have the time for the combine to be down, down three, four, or five days, which is how long it take, takes to repair. So we've been uh, working real hard to keep the combine clean and blown off to where that oil dust uh, mixture doesn't, doesn't build up. But, least, you know, the good thing about having two weeks before our soybeans is ready is that we have time to send this thing back to the dealership to have uh, have that seal replaced again. Where hope, hopefully it gets fixed. Uh, hopefully it gets fixed for good this time. Also, in addition to getting, uh, getting finished up with corn harvest, uh, uh, we got cover crops planted uh, immediately behind the combine. I got a retired landlord who likes to come out and drive tractors for us, and that's uh, what he's been doing is staying right behind the combine with a drill, getting our cover crops planted. So we got 500 acres of cover crops in the ground, and what we uh, started off planting, checked it yesterday, and it's uh, it's up to a, up to a real good stand. So. We started a corn harvest uh, on Labor Day, which was September 7th, I believe, and we're on day, uh, day 14 of corn harvest. Of that, we got rain downs. I got stick down. Of that, we got rain down a total of three days. So we've had a, we've had real, real good weather minimal problem so I'm hoping the rest uh, the rest of our harvest turns out the way way corn harvest has just hoping we get get some better yields on us on our other crops I think we stand a real good chance our full season beans look really really good maybe not record breaking like last year but they look really good and same way with their cotton but uh, one thing about corn and soybeans is you can look at them all day long but you really don't know what you got until you put the combine or cotton picker in there so anyway we got we got high hopes 
Also, another uh, another boost that we got here the last uh, several weeks is the commodity prices have taken a surprise turn upwards. So, uh, our uh, our corn, our soybeans, our cotton, all of that is more valuable than it was last month and just in time for harvest, which we forward contract as much as possible and we had about we had about two thirds of our expected production of corn contracted for uh, for right right around four dollars, which was a pretty good price. Now in hindsight seeing what the market's done in harvest time. We've been better off if we waited, but the uh, rule of thumb is you don't ever wait for harvest to uh, price out your uh, price out your grain. Otherwise, you're, you're usually going to take a bath. It's very rare that the price of grain goes up at harvest time, but that seems to be what's happened uh, this year. Uh, the Chinese, the the the, 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 China, the the demand from the Chinese has really picked up the last month. I think they're having some production issues over in China and. The exports of our grain over to China have really, really picked up. And also, we got kind of poor weather up in the Midwest to finish this crop out, and all that stuff put together has uh, led to a pretty big, uh, a pretty big increase in the price of corn and, and soybeans. Well, I guess that's about got everything wrapped up. Looks like we got about a total of two acres of corn left. I appreciate y'all riding along with me and watching this video. Uh, if you like the kind of stuff we put out, I always invite you to, to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Feel free to share it on social media. We're uh, knocking on the door of uh, getting 1,000 subscribers, so that's a pretty pretty big moment moment for us. Uh, looks like within the next week or so, we might top that 1,000 subscriber benchmark so really excited about how our channel is uh, starting start to take off we're mighty proud of what we do here at Griggs Farms LLC we try to put out the best content we can even though you know we're definitely not professionals when it comes to filming or editing we're kind of learning as we go along but I do take a lot of time to put these videos together and try and make them look as, as good as possible I appreciate y'all watching and be sure to stay tuned. We'll hopefully be able to post some more videos when we get started on, on soybeans and cotton and as we get more into the meat of our fall harvest. So stay tuned. We'll be back later. So Matt's driving down the road and um, going about 20 miles an hour. The header is on the front. Well, it was there. And he hit a uh, bump in the road where the culvert had been fixed. So when that happened, the header flipped this way and then the combine went over it. And when he did, he bounced around like a pinball. So he's driving, he goes up, down, sideways, sideways. And then he went out the windshield. And then when he did, he hit the feeder house 
and then the ground. And he was about, what did she say? Eight, ten, feet, eight to ten feet from the wheel. Right there. Right there. And then the combine stopped on a dime. So, um, the thing that made it stop was the hydrostat wires that we showed you were um, cut, the only ones that were cut. And so that's what drives the hydrostat and what drives this combine going forward and backward. And the good Lord above the good mercy Lord. in favor. There's no physical scientific explanation as to why this didn't keep going. So therefore the only thing we can say is um, the good Lord said, mm, not today, nah, not today. So, um, so basically minimal damage in the combine uh cab itself this i mean honestly this can go i we this is a this is useless this is but uh we're gonna get new glass um new seats new well new steering wheel uh they're gonna fix the column probably the monitor check that out and uh new shell everything else is i mean it popped the panel this out but it didn't pop the cigarette thing out i guess we need to be smoking more that's kind of what happened and then actually when he went over the steering wheel down to the feeder house down to the ground he got back up because the combine was still running wide open so he got there's, up there's physical evidence that he yeah. climbed back in he climbed back in we got a bloody handprint on the bloody wall the so he climbed back in shut it off tried to call me on the radio i was out of the tractor at that exact moment and then um, climbed back down and then realized, uh-oh, I went through the windshield, I'm hurt. And then I showed up like a minute later, so. Yeah. And the one thing he did wrong was he was not wearing his seatbelt. You gotta put your seatbelt on. There you go. Seatbelt every time. Saves all one, the difference. one little strap. Just put yourself in and then you won't have a convertible combine. So. Moral of the story, always wear your seatbelt. Always wear your seatbelt. With the severity of everything that happened, we are not looking near as bad as what we were expecting. We were expecting to find crumpled braces and other than some few cosmetic on the on the outer shell, we've got a steering wheel. I don't know if you can see this is <laughs> this has become a flat bar now. It's now at ten and Four, Ten and four. four <laughs> uh, Ten and four thirty. Steering wheel, steering column. Um, the windshield wiper doesn't really serve a purpose. This is all easily, all easy to replace. The, the one main concern that everybody's worried about is this. This is not supposed to be a removable piece of equipment. Uh, it's supposed to say it. It popped loose from the bottom shell. Uh, Kelly, if you want to show this right here. These are the two wires right here that God laid hands on. This is what shut the hydrostat off for this combine. These are the only two wires out of all these wiring harnesses that were affected in, in this entire cluster. This is, these are two of the main wires that run to our hydrostat on this combine that, that, uh, that got placed. That drive it. So it, that's but, how it stopped. But everything else, I mean, we've got, we've got a good clear view of the outside. Uh, wow, we got a convertible now, baby. We've, we've got a. Wait, uh, and get this. You're not allowed up here. Ha <laughs> ha, nanny, nanny, boo boo. That's, that's right, we're gonna be driving this. He ain't gonna got be driving nothing. A, a windshield. A windshield. A, a shell. Oh, hold on, let me show people this. None, um, none of the component parts. Inside. So, none of the component parts inside, but when it came down, the roof came up against this. So, this has to be replaced. This whole roof has to be replaced. So, all, all the beating and banging that this thing took from the cab being on, on independent rubber suspension mounted differently from the rest of the machine, we were expecting to find the roof to be split in half. Um, Get out of the shot. You're supposed to be sitting. The debris... I think 30 minutes. With, well, with, wait, hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, look at this. We, we, forgot, we, we forgot. We got to operate wheat beans with heated seats. <laughs> so.
So that's that's going to be priority. That's a, and and the seat is kind of like crooked. Yeah, we we've, we've got like about this. a ten degree angle to the right here. Because a six three bigger man uh, bounced around in it like a pinball. Well, behind me you can see the aftermath of the corn head. This is what's left after a 30,000 pound combine runs over it. Surprisingly, even though it's demolished, I thought it'd be a lot worse. It's just a testament to how stout Case IH uh, builds their stuff. Uh, I mean, the row units are definitely demolished. And you can see, I mean, they're bent, twisted snouts tore up and crush but the frame uh the frame still looks like it's straight i mean this one's too far gone to be able to save it but uh i'm uh, i'm just surprised it withstood uh withstood what it did and so that that row unit is is completely trash well that's where the tires of the combine hit it that one looks like it's pretty straight that one right there still looks good but then this one is uh, definitely bent bad. That one's bent really bad. You can tell by looking at it from here, the the way, the way the corn is designed, it makes for a perfect ramp to launch a combine. And you can see, I mean, how high uh, the back of this frame is off the ground. It's a good, uh, it's a good three, three and a half feet off the ground. And there's definitely not that much clearance under my combine, but there is no damage at all to the bottom side of my combine. So it definitely kind of come up and uh, caught some air on this side before it came crashing down. But again, look at the frame. I mean, the frame looks straight. I may be wrong. It may be bent and twisted, but just eyeballing it, it looks completely straight and I, I cannot believe that because it had a lot of force in it. This is where the feeder house mounts up to and it completely broke it and twisted it off whenever the head came off the combine. So the head's trashed, but man, I sure, I sure thought the damage was going to be a whole lot worse. Here's the uh, combine. Combine fared a whole lot better than the corn head did, but it's uh, still got some damage. I haven't got the estimate figured up yet on the total cost and really won't know what all needs to be done until they start digging, but just examining it superficially, unloading auger is toast. When the rear end finally landed, just the weight of the auger slamming down crumpled the unloading auger tube. Also, when it came slamming down, uh, the back axle pivoted and crushed this wiring harness up under the bump stop. No big deal there. You really can't see it too well, but the grain tank, bottom of the grain tank, got crumpled just from the force of the impact so the entire the entire grain tank has to come out and that means disassembling all the sheet metal unloading auger chains pulleys all that kind of stuff and what i understand the grain tank itself is a modular design and it, it comes off but unfortunately you got to take a lot of stuff off to get to it i can't climb up there because i have broke ribs but right there in the center of that frame we've got cracks in the frame of the rotor compartment same way up here on 
this corner, another crack. And I believe there's some tiny cracks down here on the, on the bottom too. Uh, no big deal, I already got an estimate from a welding shop to fix those. It's gonna cost about $200 to have it professionally welded, which I was surprised. Definitely a whole lot cheaper than the labor and parts to replace that compartment. So that's, as long as the insurance doesn't total my combine out, that's the route we're gonna go. Right rear tire uh, bent the rim whenever it landed. It's causing the tire to lose air. No big deal after the force of the impact though. That rim should be broke in two. Not to mention the rear axle there. I mean, it ought to be folded like an accordion. And the front axle too. I mean, there's absolutely no reason for it to be completely intact. I mean, we had 30,000 pounds of steel airborne, came crashing down. There should be a lot more broke on it than what, what it is. I'm gonna try and give you a view of the underside here underside the underside is pristine you can tell no part of the underside of the combine touched the corn header at all when it went over it and you've only got about 24 to 30 inches of clearance up under the bottom but i mean you can tell the cages i mean those are pretty fragile it wouldn't take much to much to put a dent in them or rip them off got the underside of the fan there uh, none of that stuff has been touched bottom side of the elevator clean grain auger all that is just fine I, I'm just I'm totally blown away and then here here's where we got the biggest damage uh, the cab was uh, the cab was demolished if you look up here right there in the center you can see some fiberglass poking up that's the kind of impact that we had when we landed it knocked the cab over into the grain tank and chip the fiberglass on both sides. As you can tell there's a, there's probably about an inch, inch and a half clearance right there, but it hit with such force that it shook the cab enough to, to, do, to do that. Front glass, that's where I came out. I was, e I was ejected through, through there whenever it came landing. The seat, as far as I, I haven't been able to get back up in there because of my injuries, but uh, they tell me the seat's broken. The console, they put the console back where it was, but uh, the mounting bolts on it are completely broke. Steering wheel is bent. Not sure about the steering column, but the steering wheel is definitely bent. But when I was, uh, when I was ejected, I do remember being thrown out this side of the steering wheel through the glass. Not really sure what broke my ribs. I wouldn't be surprised if I landed on the, or hit my ribs on the feeder house before I hit the ground, but I really don't know. Uh, it's, I, have, I don't remember anything after going through the glass and then waking up there on the road just a couple seconds after, after I landed. So, uh, so far that's that's the, all the damage that we have found on the combine. So considering what it went through, it's relatively minor. The, the biggest fix is going to be the grain tank. It's, uh, they tell me it takes like, it's like 80 man hours to replace that. And you're talking about a, probably $100, $120 per man hour. So that's going to get expensive in a hurry. I hope, I hope they can get this thing fixed and get it back to me. I hope it doesn't get totaled out because to replace the combine with one similar, I mean, we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be talking about a pretty good chunk of change to replace this with a, with, replace this with a similar, similar model. And, you know, with the state of the farm economy now, grain prices, cotton prices where they are, that's just something that's really going to be be tough to swing. I just spent twenty five thousand dollars on this combine this winter, having uh, things repaired and replaced on it. I mean, the combine is in excellent mechanical condition, and to replace it with a used one, you know, I'd probably be starting over from scratch. There's going to be things on it that are either wore out or close to wore out that I'm going to sink that same money back into. So, 
our best option definitely is to get this one fixed if it can be fixed and get it back to us but yeah you know, i'm not going to worry about it uh, the lord has brought me through this the lord's always provided for me and i know he's going to provide provide for me now i don't know how he's going to do it but i've got faith that he will provide a way for us to get another combine and keep on harvesting I really have my doubts if it's going to happen in the two week time period that we have before our beans are ready, but I've got faith that the good Lord is going to take care of all this and I'm going to turn it over to him and just and try and try to get out of his way. One last casualty to mention, uh, as y'all know, we do a lot of uh, video of our harvest operations and a lot of times I carry the drone around in the cab with me. It sits on the ledge back, back behind the seat and anyway. Not only did I get ejected from the cab, but my drone got ejected from the cab, and surprisingly, it should be in worse shape, but the big expensive thing is tore up. The gimbal on the camera got broke, so that's uh, that's probably about three-fourths of the cost of the drone, so don't know if it's going to be cost-effective to repair it or even if we get the parts to repair it, so... Might be getting another drone to continue our videos. Uh, also got a crack in the shell. I don't really know what that wire wire goes to, but I say the thing got it got ejected at 20 miles an hour through the windshield of a combine and landed about uh, 15 feet from the combine on the road. So it's a testament to how tough a DGI builds their drones for it to still be in as good a shape as that. Well, we tried to describe as, as accurate and as closely as possible as, as what happened. And folks, I don't, if there's anything y'all take away from this, learn from, learn from what happened from us. Don't cut any corners when it kind of comes to safety. I know we're all in a hurry. We want to get the crop out. When we get the seed planted, we want to get the hay bale. We'll get the grain bin unplugged. Don't cut corners on safety. You might've done it just fine a thousand times before but all it takes is one time good lord looked at looked out af after me i was given another chance at life i live i lived another day to learn from my mistakes you might not be that lucky so please you don't know what tomorrow brings you might be young you might be healthy but what happened to me proved that you know if it happened to me it can happen to anybody if you're not right with God, if you don't know the Lord, make that change in your life now. You don't know if you got tomorrow. Thanks for watching.